Welcome. This is my channel and I tell stories of the mysterious, twisted, and paranormal. So please stick around and consider subscribing and turning on your post notifications. Now, I got a story for you today that will entertain you. So relax and enjoy and remember, as of now, it's time to slip into a mind that's not our own. So let's go. Now, does anybody know what one of the most fundamental questions of our species has? It is the question of whether we are alone or not in the universe. If you're a gambling person, the smart money says, no, we are not. This is given the astronomical number of planetary systems in our own galaxy, let alone the observable universe. Just mathematically speaking, it seems very unlikely that biological beings would spring up here on Earth and nowhere else. So surely there must be other worlds that have intelligent life, perhaps even more complex life than us. And if that's the case, there's one question to ask. Where are all these aliens? Now, this question was famously said by Enrico Fermi back in 1950. And to a lot of people, the answer is obvious. And it's that they are um, here among us or they're invading our airspace and sometimes even beaming us up to their ships. And if that sounds full of hyperbole, it's meant to. But there are people who believe this a hundred percent and people who claim to have encountered these aliens and some of their stories are extremely difficult to debunk like this one. Berkshire County, Massachusetts seems like a great place to live. It's on the far west corner of the state, and there's a bunch of rolling hills and emerald forests. And places like Lenox and Great Barrington are straight out of a Norman Rockwell painting. And indeed, Rockwell spent the latter years of his life living here in Stockbridge. It was a great place to raise a family back then and is now. And it was also a great place in 1969, which is where our story takes place. Now, it was just after dusk on a very hot Labor Day, September 1st, 1969. And Jane Green and her friend Mary were driving along U.S. Route 7, heading from Stockbridge to their home in Great Barrington. Now, Jane was at the wheel when all of a sudden she spotted a bright light in the distance and at first she thought you know it was an accident ahead but as she got closer the light became so blinding that she had to pull off on the side of the highway and while doing so she noticed several of the other vehicles on the highway have done the same thing plus a number of drivers had gotten out and were standing on the side of the highway so jane did the same thing she had a really good view of the light at that moment and it appeared to be cylindrical and about two stories high and wide enough to about to be two spans of the highway. Amazingly, this massive disc seemed to be hovering in the air and then it rose silently into the night sky, shifted to the right, then flew away at an incredible speed disappearing over the hills and at that very same time that Jane Green was having this encounter 10 year old Tom Warner was visiting his neighbor Jane Shaw in the town of Great Barrington Tom was a kid with an artistic side and he liked to drop by the Shaw's residence where Jane's older sister Debbie would give him crayons and he would draw what he considered to be masterpieces and on this night, Tom just finished a picture when he felt himself drawn to the window, when he heard what he later described as a voice in his head telling him to go home. Go this home. instruction was so commanding that the boy felt powerless to ignore it. So 
He dashed out of the house, not even saying goodnight to the Shaws. And very much alarmed, Jane ran after him, but was brought to a shuddering halt when she saw what she saw. And what she saw was Tom out on the lawn, bathed in a beam of light from above, and he was running at full speed, except Tom wasn't going anywhere. He was running in place as if he was on a treadmill. And as Jane watched, she could see the boy's arms were thrown back, almost as if he encountered a fierce headwind. Then, right in front of Jane's eyes, Tom Warner disappeared. Also, Thomas Reed was the same age as Tom Warner on that September night in 1969. And unlike his namesake, whose family had six generations of history in Berkshire County, Thomas was an outsider. And his family was from New York, plus his mother Nancy had relocated them here so that Thomas and his brother could grow up away from the crime of the big city. Nancy owned a popular Village Green restaurant in Sheffield, and the family enjoyed dinner there that night and were heading home at around 9 p.m. Thomas and his brother were in the back seat and the boy's grandmother was sitting in front and Nancy was behind the wheel. And just as they were crossing the covered Sheffield Bridge, they encountered that same UFO. According to Thomas's later account, the craft rose up from the trees right behind the Hasatonic River and suddenly the car was flooded with light and it was so bright that Thomas could make out every detail inside and his mom would later describe the UFO in very similar words to Jane Green. They said it was cylindrical at least a hundred yards wide which is a football field and two stories high. Plus despite its massive size was absolutely no sound at all. In fact, everything became very calm as if you were in the eye of a storm. Then, suddenly there was a pressure drop, like being deep underwater, as Nancy described it. And after that, there was an eruption of noise from the local wildlife. Then, nobody in the car could remember anything. After that, they woke up two hours later in a parking lot of a drugstore in Sheffield. The car's ignition was off, but there was one more thing that was odd. It was Nancy was in the passenger seat and her mother, the kid's grandmother, was behind the wheel. And I must note that the older woman had never driven a car a day in her life. Then, on the same night of September 1st, 1969, Melody Kirk Dorfer was 12 years old and the last thing that she wanted to do on this gorgeous late summer eve was to go out for ice cream with her parents. So she and her sister were put in the family's car and driven to the local Dairy Queen in Great Barrington. Then from there, their father drove them to a nearby lake called Lake Mansfield where they could enjoy their ice cream under the stars. And he just backed up into a parking space when the car suddenly was lit up from above. And Melanie would later recall being absolutely terrified. Then when her father decided to chase after this light, she and her sister begged him not to. And the next thing that Melanie remembered was being inside a huge ship along with hundreds of other children and she said she was sprawled out on her back, levitating. Then, suddenly she was awake again, back in the parking lot at Lake Mansfield, except now she was alone. Her parents and sister were nowhere to be seen, along with the car. So Melanie had to walk home that night, and neither her parents or sister recall the incident in any way other than seeing a light, and her mother was certain that it was just a shooting star. To me, at least, this makes absolutely no sense. Because if it was just a shooting star, why would you be okay with leaving your young child by the lake having to make them walk home? It makes absolutely no sense. 
And around the same time that Melanie was waking up alone at the lake, Tom Warner was reappearing before the startled eyes of his friend Jane Shaw. And according to Jane's later accounts, he was gone for seven minutes. And like Melanie, Tom was later recalled being aboard some kind of craft. He explained it as being inside of a huge hangar. And the even more crazy thing is that he also recalled seeing Melanie there. And the pair had never met before. So when they were first introduced years later, Melanie described this feeling of an instant connection between her and Tom. Tom, Melanie, Thomas, Nancy, Jane Shaw, and Jane Breen had all experienced something extraordinary that night. And they were not the only ones from all the towns around Route 7, from Pittsfield, Lenox, Stockbridge, Great Barrington, Eagermount, Sheffield, from as far north as Cannon, Connecticut, reports of the UFO sightings were pouring in. Even local radio station WSBS was inundated with these calls and host Tom Jay was just fielding these calls late into the night. But unfortunately, that station did not consider these recordings, at least of that show that night, important enough to preserve because the tapes were dubbed over for the next night's broadcast, thus deleting dozens of first-hand accounts of a possible alien encounter. Then, the local newspaper called the Berkshire Eagle treated the sightings with similar disdain and did not even devote a single column to these stories and mostly regarded them as a hoax. And as for the police reports, there was not a one. In the midst of this extraordinary event, perhaps the most extraordinary in this county's history, it seems that absolutely no one had called the authorities because Great Barrington PD logs for that night show only a few minor complaints and not a single one of them have to do with lights in the sky. Perhaps those who saw the lights were afraid to file a report because they were afraid of the ridicule and rightfully so because those fears of ridicule would be justified the people who did speak out about their experiences on that fateful night were generally dismissed or even harassed jane green kept her story mostly to herself not even telling her children until years later when they were all grown up. Melanie at least had her sister and boyfriend who believed her, but she didn't discuss the incident with anyone else, and Tom Warner did talk about it, even painting a picture of what he saw, and he later related how he could never get a date in high school because he was considered as weird. The Reed family suffered perhaps the most persecution. Thomas was the most outspoken out of all those who saw the UFO, and he was bullied at high school as a result. Plus, his family was also targeted. Nancy would routinely be tailgated on the road and harassed at her business, so she eventually sold up the place and left Sheffield for good. Now, the events of September 1st, 1969 remain one of the most perplexing in the UFO record, but what was it that the residents of Berkshire County saw that night? Was it really a spaceship from another world? I mean, without evidence for or against, that question is impossible to answer. All we know is the usual explanations offered in these circumstances came up. Like some people say it was swamp gas, and other people say it was a weather balloon, and then you have some who say it was an experimental military aircraft. But all of these in this case seem inadequate. Because this indeed was a phenomenon, remember? This was witnessed by hundreds of people along a geographical corridor of 50 miles long with 
all of them telling essentially the exact same story. I mean, can they all really be lying or confused or involved in some conspiracy? Absolutely not. But it is to add that in February 2015, the Great Barrington Historical Society officially recognized the September 1969 sightings as genuine, calling it the first off-world UFO case in U.S. history, and a monument was erected in Sheffield commemorating this event. Sadly, though, it was full of graffiti within the first week of being up. So, when you hear this story, is it just another story? Or do you believe? Let me know in the comments. I want to know. 98.2% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So all I ask, if you are a passerby, and you're one of those 98.2% of people that are not subscribed, please just take one second to hit that subscribe button and I promise you that you now can take this journey with us and believe me, it'll be one hell of a journey.